think that uh, we do a pretty good job um, developing pitchers. And, uh, you know, if people want to talk about it, I think that's a good thing. But, you know, there's so many people to talk about, to about that, too. All right, no one's watched this but Cleveland Indians fans. What's the secret? If, you know, it's, I know it's a bland question, but what is the secret? Like, I've heard repeatable, you know, so a guy that can repeat, a guy that throws strikes. And, and, a lot of, and I've had people look at me and shrug my shoulders and like, yeah, no kidding. But what is it that you guys feel that you're finding that maybe others aren't? I think one of the things that we do a pretty good job is actually educating our pitchers about themselves, of who they are, uh, having them embrace that and then work around that. I think there's so many people that go involved, that are involved in that, uh, whether it's analytically or physically or fundamentally or mentally. There's a lot of avenues that you can go in that and, and, and to finding what's best for the pitcher. Um, but at the end of the day, you have these these uh, keys that you find, uh, these uh, these coaching tools that you find that help them hopefully elevate their game to be successful at the major league level. So it's not just one thing. And you hear this over and over again. It's not just one thing. There's so many things. There's so many people involved. But at the end of the day, it's the pitcher that applies himself to be the best version of themselves. And, and the understanding is huge. It's important because if they understand something, they'll be able to say, yes, this is for me. No, this isn't for me. And once you have that that combination and those conversations happening, then it's, there's transparency within that, then you'll get a lot further. And we, we gotta be open and respectful to the pitcher and saying that if, if he doesn't wanna do something, if he feels that this isn't for him, okay, either we use another coach approach or we continue going in the direction that the pitcher wants to be because ultimately he's the one that's gonna be out there competing. He's gonna be the one getting it done. Uh, but being able to have, Productive conversations is very important to us. How much does it help you in your role right now? That a lot of these guys are in the big leagues, as young as they are, you watch them, you had conversations with them when they were in single A, when they were in double A, um, when they were in, you know, when maybe they had some hiccups lower. Like, how much do you think that helps you right now with the group you guys have? Well, I think it's building that that uh, that camaraderie, that friendship, that trust. Uh, I think that's very important to be able to have a, a more foundational uh, conversation with them, uh, where you can say, "Hey, remember this day? Remember we used to do this?" Not only that, is understanding the pitchers that how much how much they can intake, how much can they adjust, how much are they capable of of just themselves taking ownership of it. Um, I think that's very important to have have that uh, have that understanding of them. So it has, you know, I've been blessed to be the, the coordinator for so many years here and now with the major league team and seeing these guys come up, um, you know, through through our system. It helps us have uh, just an understanding when they come up here that they understand who they are, and then the conversations become uh, more productive, as I, as I mentioned. So it, it, it's great seeing familiar faces, and hopefully they feel the same way um, when they get up there and say, like, well, this is just the next step. This is just the next level, even though it isn't. Major League level is a little bit different. But hopefully they feel comfortable enough to say, like, okay, I've had a path. I continue the path. I've built a good foundation. I continue building on that. I love this conversation because it's going to lead me into talking about Aaron Sabali. From the outside looking in, it looks like a young pitcher that threw one of the, he was in the top five, I think, in most innings pitched last year. I know it's a shortened season. Um, a guy that gets to the sixth inning almost every time that he's pitched coming out of the minors. A guy that a lot of people didn't know about maybe on the outside. Um, for us, guys that do the game, we see him as, I think Rick Manning gives him the best compliment that you can give. Because I think when Rick Manning's been around baseball and played baseball for so many years, and when he says he reminds me of a veteran from day one, to me that's the best compliment a young pitcher can have. But I'm not saying just you, but this organization looked at him after two big league seasons, and you, I don't want to put words, so you can help me, but you guys found a way to tinker and change what he was doing. What goes to that thought process of never being satisfied, maybe? Or what goes into the thought process that you guys went through clearance about with this offseason? Yeah, I think it's understanding the player again. I know how motivated Aaron Sibali is to have success. And you take a, a step backwards, and we do this with every pitcher, is evaluate the season that they had. Um, I knew that Aaron was not completely satisfied with the season that he had. Um, you know, I think the numbers indicated that a little bit. And talking to him, you know, even before the season, I knew what his goals were uh, going into that season. So 
as you break down the delivery, as you break down the person, as you break down the mover, and, and you start looking at him holistically, uh, there was an opportunity there. And, and so that was an easier conversation. I put it on his plate, you know, how, what do you think about this? Um, you know, there, when you're talking to Aaron, you've got to lay it out and you've got to say, like, this is going to happen in this way, this manner. This could possibly go wrong. This could possibly go good. If it goes good, this is the outcome that we're going to have. And then hand it over to him. Let him digest it. Let him think about it. And, and if it's something for him, then he was going to go all in like he did. And, and he did an outstanding job um, with communication, with videos, with just talking to the entire staff about, you know, this is this is what's happening. This is what I'm feeling with this pitch. This is how I'm I'm going through the transition. And um, with that, we felt very comfortable, um, especially with Aaron, uh, because he has such a great understanding, not only himself, but of the game itself. And he understands ball flight. He understands uh, how to get swing and miss rates. He understands how to have success in a game. And so uh, it was a, a, an easier conversation per se with him, but at the end of the day, it was uh, very strategic. All right, in layman's terms, <laughs> what, what did you change? What, what did he change? I know he was throwing footballs to kind of change. I don't want to say anything wrong. He was using, is it using his legs? The, the, what parts of his legs? What changed that you think is going to help propel him? Well, one of the things that we noticed was the timing of how he rotates into the ball. Uh, there's a few things that go into this. There's, there's being able to track the hand behind the ball to release the ball to create better shapes, to create a better down angle pitch, uh, to be able to spin the ball a little bit better with a slider, to be able to, most importantly for him, it was like, how do you stay behind your forcing fastball and create that great ride uh, that, that you can create at times, but you can't do it consistently. Um, so a time, and delivery is all about timing. So there was a timing component that we were trying to improve there. Uh, with him getting his arm cocked and ready in a good position as, his, as he's uh, getting into foot plant on the front side. Um, so with that, it created a tighter rotation. We also knew that if the arm was going to be tighter, the, the rotation, angular force of the rotation of his body was going to have to get a little bit quicker as well. And so that was uh, put into the equation. It's like there was goals set into place that you, as you're building this, you've got to be able to make sure you've got all the checkpoints in line. And um, you know, he, it seems like he's been able to do it. We're, we're getting the desired outcome of pitches. Um, one of the things he's trying to figure out is how does he then put those combination of pitches and pitch shapes together to attack the hitters. And that's, that might be a little bit of a learning process. Um, you know, there, there might be some, uh, some failed at bats, if you may. Uh, but at the same time, we feel uh, very comfortable and confident that that is going to be something that's going to help him for the, for the future. Uh, you know, hopefully he pitches for the next 12 years. And there is the health component of it as well um, that is taken into account. Uh, what is the most efficient and, and safest arm path and, and how do you get into those positions? And, and uh, you know, everything seems to line up. I remember when I grew up, and I'm not that old. Well, I guess I am getting old. I'm in my 40s. When I was growing up, every starting pitcher had the wide, you know, cool, everybody, it was like their identity. You know, the batting stance for a hitter, whether it's Julio Franco or, but you know, everybody had their, their windup. And the more and more I watch baseball nowadays, the windup, it, it, it seems to be thrown out the window. For the fan that asks us constantly, why are more, and, and Savali's one of them, it looks like he's almost from the stretch. Um, and it's not just our guys, I see him all around the league. Um, what's the, the thought process in your mind behind why we're seeing more and more starting pitchers kind of throw away uh, the big wind mm -hmm. I think it had to do a lot about uh, with science and biomechanics getting more involved with our game is that the initial movement of the drop step and and, and and what that looks like and what it actually brings and contributes to the delivery was less important than the ability to get loaded into your backside, get loaded into into your hips. Um, that became a, a little bit more of a, of a of a thing that we wanted to do. Um, so so what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of pitchers being able to say like, okay, so can I do away with this movement? Less movement is better. I can repeat repeat it better. Uh, can I get into this position? So, you know, we see it and, it and it works for a lot of people, but I think at the end of the day, I think one of the goals is how do we maximize the ground force going into our body and how do we get into uh, it? You know, we saw it with Carrasco. Yeah. You know, he, he had a delivery and at one point when he came back out of the uh, bullpen, he went straight to the, straight to the stretch. He didn't lose a, a beat.
you know, and so I think that's that's another example that we were able to use. You just mentioned Carrasco. Um, there's no Kluber in this in this pitching and rotation now. Carrasco, Clevenger, Bauer. Um, that's a heck of a rotation, just <laughs> those four, four names. Um, for fans that are watching that want to be excited about this team, there's a lot of youth when it comes to pitching. But what excites you and what makes you feel as part of this group that success is still going to be a possibility at a big point? I think the youth is one of the, the, the greatest things that, you know, that we see with this rotation. Uh, that, and that what that tells you is that there's a, a lot of potential and then there's going to be growth still that's going to happen from here to be able to attain their, their max potential. So that in itself is very exciting because they already are bringing something very special to the table. All of them have a very good understanding. Again, a lot of stuff that we already talked about, a lot of, a lot of good understanding about themselves. They have the stuff, they have the velo, they have great training routines. So that is in itself uh, a recipe for success. So I think that's what we feel comfortable is that uh, you know, as these guys depart, the four guys that you mentioned, as these guys depart, then there's there's somebody there to step up and, and come in and, and take their spots and then feel comfortable with the people around them because they're familiar with those faces. And, um, you know, they, they pick their brains, each other's brains so much, and they talk to each other. And I told the guys one day, I, you know, I was with Shane and, and Aaron and Plezak standing there, and we were talking, and... I was like, man, I don't even recognize you. The confident level that you guys are bringing to this, to the to this game at, at the highest level is unbelievable, and um, you know that that's part of it. These guys believe in themselves. All right, I told somebody I was talking to you today, and this has happened a couple of times. They go, the pitching whisper. <laughs> I'm not. It's a compliment, but what is that? And, and, and look, I won't show this to the other coaches or anybody else. But what is that in Cleveland when your name is mentioned? That's kind of the thought process. What is like for people that don't know a lot about you, but they know that and obviously I can tell how you're looking. What does it mean that that's what people are saying or they think when I bring up your name? Uh, you know, it was one article, right? It was one article, but I'm not sure what it means. You know, it, it's um, it's a compliment, but I've just been at the right place at the right time with a great organization and it's it's something that you know we've had success and being a pitching coordinator or you know at the upper levels as a coach and then being able to be as a coordinator and be able to be a leader within our pitching domain uh, again that's being at the right place at the right time for me because there's so many good people uh, that are around us our, our minor league group is so aligned with us. Um, our minor league group are, is aligned within themselves. Uh, our major league group is aligned with them. And so when you have this consistency, I think that, you know, it, you, yeah, you can, you can pick one person, but at the end of the day, it's all of us. Uh, it's the whole pitching group. And I'm not to mention the, the, the analysts. You know, there's a lot of great people up in the fourth floor that are, that are helping us, you know, with what we do. And they're giving, providing information, providing feedback. And, you know, at that point, you know, you've got to be a good coach. You've got to be able to make that transfer to the field and, and to the game. So when that starts happening, there's going to be success. And if they want to pick one person, then, you know, okay, we'll whisper. All right. Well, it was the last question, but I'll say this. I think it's cool that Carl, Carl looks like the old school guy, you know. But he's been successful. He's, you got Sweeney, and who's younger. You guys are younger. Um, how is, is how cool is it that they've been able to make this work? Well, I think the backgrounds are so different, and then we're able to come together and be one unit. That's that's awesome. The experiences that we all bring uh, to the table and our strengths uh, that we all bring to the table, you know, we're, we make it work, and and hopefully we can continue doing that for a really long time. Uh, but again, it's 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 a foundation that has been set, it has been built, and, and we're just following suit.